it'll be more similar to a spacewalk. Your sense of up and down is sort of screwed up. And you have to be very careful when you walk around on an asteroid because the gravity of the asteroid is so weak. A good jump can send you into an orbit around the asteroid or even send you out at escape velocity and escape from the asteroid completely. So you have to make sure that you're tethered down when you're exploring. But since rovers have already proved to be so successful at exploring other worlds, is there a strong reason to send astronauts to an asteroid? Astronauts, explorers, the public interested in space yearn to see what it's like in person through real human eyes. And that day is coming. Robots can do a lot and have done a lot in space exploration, but there is no better geologist than a human being. To be a geologist exploring an asteroid and being able to recognize the history of a particular region, looking at familiar types of geological formations, you know just what you want to do. You want to go sample that rock. You don't want to go sample that rock. Asteroids are also important because of the resources they might contain. The year is 2050, and a crew of astronauts has just landed their spacecraft on an asteroid. They're not here to explore. This is merely a pit stop. But what types of precious resources could this small rocky world possibly contain? An asteroid attack can wipe out entire species including humans. But instead of accepting that fate, scientists are trying to learn enough about them to prevent disaster. And asteroids that aren't headed towards Earth may even turn out to be helpful. One of the reasons to visit asteroids and to study them is that they may have some resources that could be useful to future human explorers. And among the most important of those would be ice, water. People are going to need ice to live and drink and use in a practical sense. The year is 2050, and a crew on its way to Mars has just stopped at an asteroid for water and other supplies. The oxygen in the water can be separated to refill the crew's breathing tanks. But there's even more that this rocky supply station has to offer. It's conceivable that with advanced technology, we could go to those asteroids, break down the water, and use the hydrogen and oxygen as fuel to take spacecraft even farther. And there may even be priceless materials to bring back to Earth. Elements so rare and critical to high-tech success that they could be the cause of future wars. Some asteroids have platinum and titanium and rare earth elements that are important in many aspects of electronics, which are called rare earth elements for a reason, because they're rare on the earth. They might not be so rare in certain kinds of asteroids. But the most important reason to investigate asteroids remains their ability to instantly kill millions of people or wipe out the human race altogether. To counter this threat, NASA launched the WISE mission in December 2009. The Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer has already found 25,000 asteroids and more than a dozen comets that were too dark to find using visible light. It's actually looking all around our solar system, hopefully to look at 99% of the sky and try and map uh, more of these near-Earth objects, these asteroids that we haven't found in the past. And hopefully that'll help us in understanding if there are any that are in near-term collision courses with the Earth. And even though it doesn't usually make front page news, there are already plenty of asteroids that pass close to Earth. In April 2010, a 70-foot-wide asteroid passed within 220,000 miles of Earth, 
which is closer than the distance from the Earth to the moon. And a few months before that, a 23-foot wide asteroid came much closer. In the winter of 2009, in November, there was an asteroid that passed so close to the Earth, it was only eight to 9,000 miles away at its closest approach. And we didn't know about that until it got fairly close. That's about the same distance as flying from Los Angeles to Mumbai, India. And back in 1972, a tourist's camera near the Grand Tetons in Wyoming captured a much closer pass by a similar sized object. The 1972 event was about as close as you can get to a collision without actually colliding. On its way in, it was going to collide with the Earth, but it skipped off of the atmosphere due to the pressure of the air, like a pebble being skipped off of the surface of a lake. That was a really close call. Then, in October 2008, a small and seemingly uneventful impact occurred in a remote part of the African country of Sudan. But it actually represented a giant step forward in the science of predicting asteroid impacts. A small asteroid was discovered, and it was predicted to land in Sudan the next day, and it did. Now, this is the first case we have of an object that was discovered and then predicted to land at a particular time and place. And in fact, fragments of this object were later found over the desert. But that was only a small impact with a single day's notice. Today, the jury is still out on whether we'll be able to identify and deflect something that could inflict catastrophic damage on Earth. Scientists believe there are still millions of unidentified asteroids out there capable of destroying a city. Or worse, will we be able to figure out which ones will cross our path? And will we be able to prevent them from slamming into Earth? The stakes couldn't possibly be any higher. Each new discovery in the world of asteroids isn't just a scientific advance, but an opportunity to increase the survival chances. Let's seek 